The Wizard of Oz. There's a very good chance you've either seen the movie, read the book, or have heard of it sometime throughout your life. This fictional story is very popular, despite the fact that it was published 120 years ago. But is there more to it than fiction? Written by Frank L. Baum on May 17, 1900, he was able to sell 3 million copies in the 56 years after it was published. So clearly, it's a popular story. So much so that it's been adapted into several different art forms. On August 25th, 1939, The Wizard of Oz movie came out grossing $29.7 million. The story also made an appearance on stage. It was turned into a musical titled The Wiz, and it appeared on Broadway before closing after four years of shows. A second musical was also created from the story, Wicked, which is also one of the longest running Broadway shows. Dunkin' Donuts has also made an homage to The Wizard of Oz, you probably heard of Munchkins, the donut holes. Well, those were named after characters in Oz. The Wizard of Oz is a fantastical book about Dorothy, who is taken care of by her uncle and aunt. The three of them live together in the bleak and gray farmlands of Kansas with Dorothy's dog, Toto. One day, a cyclone comes through, but Dorothy wasn't able to get inside the cellar in time. The cyclone ended up picking up her house and carrying her to the land of Oz, which was much more colorful and alive compared to Kansas. In Oz, she was greeted by three small men in blue called Munchkins and a small woman in white Glinda, the Good Witch of the North. Glinda set Dorothy on her journey on the Yellow Brick Road to go to the Emerald City to see the all-powerful leader, Oz. On her journey to Oz, she is joined by a scarecrow, tin woodman, and cowardly lion. It wasn't until 1964 that Baum's story was looked at in a completely new way. Henry Littlefield, a history teacher who studied at Columbia University, published an article in the American Quarterly titled The Wizard of Oz, Parable on Populism. He proposed the idea of the book also being an allegory to the historical events around the time the book was written. The only problem with this idea is that he had gone purely off of the research he did on the time period and the author, because unfortunately, Frank L. Baum had already passed away away 45 years before anyone realized the possible historical connection. So listen to these allegories and decide for yourself, is this merely a strange coincidence or really an allegorical work of literature? Dorothy's shoes are iconic. And when you think of the color, I'm sure you think, yes, red. Except they were actually silver in the book, not ruby red. In 1896, the Democratic presidential nominee, William Jennings Bryan delivered his famous cross of gold speech in which he proposed that paper money should be backed up by silver and gold instead of only gold like it had been. So the silver shoes are said to represent silver and the yellow brick road is said to represent gold and the emerald city green paper money. The brainless scarecrow in the story is said to represent farmers because they were constantly planting crops without rotating them, which led to the depletion of nutrients in the soil, making it harder to keep growing healthy crops. After the scarecrow, Dorothy met the tin wood man who was in need of a heart. He represents factories and their workers because the heartless industry put kids on rigorous and cruel schedules in unsafe conditions. He was also rusty when he was found by Dorothy and wasn't able to move until she oiled his joints. This has been connected to the depression of 1893 when industries were shut down. In the book, the Tin Wood Man explicitly said that he had been groaning for more than a year, which is how long the depression lasted from January 1893 until July 1894. The Cowardly Lion is said to represent the presidential nominee, William Jennings Bryan, and the character Oz, who was thought to be all powerful, but was really putting up a facade, is said to represent any president from Grant to McKinley. And there are several more that people have found. So what do you think? Coincidence or not? And really, what does it matter that there might be a connection to history? Short's sure, interesting, but is it important? Yes, it is important for many reasons, but I'm going to expand on the one that I think is the most important, education. In finding the connections in a story you love, I'm sure you at least found some interest in the possible parallels, and that's the beauty of it. Teachers have been using the allegory to teach their students about the 1890s, and for good reason. It makes learning more engaging. 
This book and how these findings have been used can also be applied when looking at learning in general. School systems aren't tailored to every student's way of learning and therefore many students either have difficulty picking up material or end up hating school. Humans are wired to learn through play because when we were kids, we would learn with toys and songs and games. Too often when you get older, learning becomes serious. But if we use the Wizard of Oz, we can let it teach us how to make learning fun. So this week, I challenge you to find one way you can make an assignment more engaging, whatever it may be. You can make a Jeopardy game to study for your final or put dramatic music on in the background. Whatever it is, find something. And that's all. Thank you for listening to me talk.